In today's episode, we're going to talk about something very important in Total War Arena, the weapons. And of course, answering your questions at the same time. So, the first question is, what weapons are there? Well, we've got loads of different types of weapons and they can all be broken down into further categories. So we have sword infantry, we have cavalry, we have spear cavalry, sword cavalry. We have our new war dogs, which came with Boudicca. Great weapon, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The semi-autonomous weapon system. That's what it is. <laughs> the first drone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And then uh, obviously for ranged, we also have uh, the slingers, the archers and the javelin men. So they all, they all fill different roles, but they're kind of our, our main ones for now. But whenever we add new factions, sometimes new commanders, they, they come along with new weapon types. Yeah. The, the weapon type really is the primary defining factor of, of what a unit is and how it plays. Uh, so swordsmen, they all have a lot in common, even though Roman swords are a little bit different from barbarian swords, but it's still a sword unit, right? So that's kind of what drives how you would play that unit primarily, or um, spears, they have a play style and so on. So the follow-up question, I guess then, you got a swords unit, okay? So then you have your, what, dagger swords, your short sword swords, your long sword swords, your great sword swords. Like, is it all just one type of swords or in, in Total War Arena, you're only going for the historical sh swords? Like, how, are, how is swords defined within themselves? Well, we uh, generally, I would say we have two major types of swords in the game. We have the swords, standard swords, right? We don't really make it, uh, Gameplay-wise distinction between how long that sword is or whether it's made of bronze or iron. Um, but what we do is uh, we look at the different shapes. So we, the barbarians have access to the Faxman, which the Fax is a sword type that was um, produced in ancient Dacia and Thracia, so modern day kind of Romania, Bulgaria. And um, it was a very particular curved sword that they used to uh, great strength against the Romans. Um, basically trying to circumvent the Roman shields. And um, that weapon uh, plays differently from normal swords because it, well, in our game it just ignores shields. Well, the Folksmen, they would, so they had their long swords uh, and it would either be one or two-handed and we went for the more two-handed version, which were later, and they would sharpen the inside curve. So it's like a sickle, like a, not as dramatic as a sickle, but they'd sharpen the inside. And it was said that if you really put your weight behind it, you can split a shield in two with wow. a swing of a fox. And is that in the game? Well, the foxes are. I mean, they are splitting the well, shields. Why would they ignore shields? Because we take kind of the historical stuff and find a way to make that work in gameplay. So you said that we have bronze swords versus iron swords in the game or some swords like that, but there's no distinguishing features. And, and one of the community questions was, well, iron beats bronze, so why is there not a distinct advantage? Bronze is an alloy of copper and tin, whereas iron is just iron. So iron beat bronze in terms of Economically, it was so much easier to get. You could just dig it out and then kind of make it into iron swords. But bronze, you had to add tin, you had to add copper. But in terms of kind of actual cutting and kind of all that kind of stuff, the Greeks were really good at um, tempering the edges of their swords. And that would uh, give the bronze this really good cutting edge. So in terms of a, a 1v1 fight of iron v bronze, I think they were pretty matched. Iron had, had better kind of benefits for armor, I would say, in that it would bend instead of shattering. So the Romans, they start off, if you look at it, they have the male, which is the uh, Lochia Hamata. So that's made of iron or bronze, uh, historically. But then as they get better and better, because when steel is introduced, that's when you kind of start to see the, the higher tier Roman armor that they made that actually had steel plating. And that's shown in their higher defense later on in the tiers. But as it starts, I don't think it's, it's fair to say that iron beats bronze. Bronze definitely had its place in the ancient world. It was difficult to get a hold of, but that doesn't mean it was redundant. And also, I think it is fair to argue that a good warrior with a bronze sword is still gonna kill you, even though you might have an iron sword and yeah. you don't know how to use it. Talking about the weapons, like bronze versus iron, there's um, another weapon that comes to mind that has a similar sort of comparison. Slings, for example. You would, well, forgive someone to think that, well, why would you use a sling if you could use a bow? So um, th that's a really interesting one, actually. So in terms of the game, uh, slings have a longer range um, than bows, but they uh, have a kind of a slower rate of fire and um, they also do less armor piercing damage because, well, they're little 
bullets, you know. <laughs> um, and the bows, obviously, uh, they can fire more rapidly. And the, the bows are, are better at hitting armor, but they're still not as good as the javelins, which are very short range, but they're excellent in armor penetration. So if you want to kill a heavily armored unit, use javelins. And javelins, um, like Pila thrown by the Romans, so they would have incredible stopping power. And as you were saying, but actually their main use would have been they'd throw them into the shields to make them unwieldy. So then they'd have to put their shields down and stop using them because suddenly you've got two massive rods sticking out of it and you can't hold it up anymore. So Pila and javelins, yes, they were incredibly powerful, but Pila in particular, the Romans would throw them before the charge to make their enemies drop their shields. And, and there's an interesting thing as well about um, slings and, and arrows. Uh, in fact, I saw a very interesting TED talk on this that um, uh, when we look at the story of David and Goliath, yeah, Goliath is always in people's imaginations the, the guy with the advantage. No, really, it's a, it's a story between uh, outdated technology and more modern technology because the sling at the time was, so to say, the high-tech weapon. Really? And it was David at an advantage because if you know how to use a sling and you hit with it, you have the stopping power of a .44 Magnum. Um, are you kidding me? Yeah, so slings are extremely powerful, but they're extremely hard to use. And that's simply why you know people transitioned away from them to bows, because if you want to field a large army, you need lots of people. You're not going to find lots of people who can shoot a sling reliably, but if you give them a bow, you know, you can find more people who can do that. And it's the same when you move to gunpowder, you know. You can, so, um, so yeah, each weapon has its place. Slings are very much the underdog in ranged history, I find. A lot of people think that they were they're quite average, but actually the sling could accurately be thrown, uh, the rock from a sling, sorry, the bullet, could be thrown twice as far as a bow could be fired accurately. Incredible. If you play any normal, I say average computer game, they put the slings as like the worst, the most inaccurate, like, yeah. and so it's taught me poorly, clearly. Right, so we wanted to stick to history more. Obviously, we didn't want slings to be completely overpowered, so yes, they fire more slowly and so on, um, but we wanted to represent truly you know, their use and their power because they're very powerful. Are there any differences between the different types of cavalry? How were they used? How should they really be used in combat? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the Greek cavalry was mostly spear based. Um, so they would ride in with a spear um, and be used as shock troops. Um, mainly the cavalry was used to intimidate and um, basically kill off units that were running away, routing, um, because I mean, you, you can't really charge a cavalry into a spear wall, that doesn't work. But cavalry would go around the flanks, basically either get the spear wall to turn around so that they are then open from the other side, or once they're engaged, charge the back, um, get them to rout uh, or kill archer units that are running away. At least that's how in our game really cavalry should be used. It's not really a unit to stay engaged with. The Romans, they can survive a little bit longer because they're using swords in combat, but um, uh, Greek cavalry is very much a, a hit and run kind of um, unit. And Romans yeah. still, but to less X. And barbarians would use this for scouting a lot as well. So a lot of early skirmishes before a battle would happen, you'd usually have the fight of the cavalry when like the scouts and the skirmishers would all encounter the other scouts and skirmishers and they'd have their own first battle. And that happened a lot with the Gauls versus Geterix's yeah. cavalry hit them a lot. Um, you tend to find that there'd be an engagement of cavalry first and then the men would come in. Right. And we see that because obviously our cavalry get there first, but the barbarians would be able to scout that out first and choose that engagement because they're, they're faster, they are adapted to scouting. Now you've taught us all how to play cavalry, uh, there's a question of some OP Greek cavalry, namely the tier 5 and 6 one. So we found that they had a, a really high charge bonus compared to others, which they were meant to have, their shot cavalry. But we looked at the data, we looked at player feedback, and people were saying that perhaps it was too high. So what we've done in patch 2.1 is we've lowered the um, charge bonus for Greek cavalry. And we're going to see how that affects it. We're going to analyze that new data, see if it needs to be lowered, see if something, something else was maybe the solution instead. But yes, we've changed it. Um, we, we did have that question a lot, and hopefully this will put an end to it. So talking about OP, what about four player parties? It used to be three, now it's four. Um, maybe four a bit too much? We used to have uh, fewer people in a party. Based on player feedback, we increased it to four. There are still lots of players who say it should be five, right? And, um, you know, maybe we'll go back to three, we'll see. So, you know, we, we keep looking at that at all times. You might say parties can be OP. Yes, they can. But anybody who manages to collaborate can be absolutely OP. You know, I just played a game uh, yesterday where I was playing 
three Roman infantry units and there was another player who was playing three Greek archer units. And all I did is I just stuck to his bottom, right? And he was able to completely smash anybody around us because I was there and nobody wanted to touch him, you know? Uh, I don't know who that was. That was just some random guy. Um, but together we absolutely rocked the game. Thank you very much. And uh, that's it for weapons. And I'll see you on the battlefield.